This is New Cap News with Nicole Stilger. Olympic gold medalist and 18-time Grand Slam curling champion Kevin Martin was in the border city today to talk about the Pinty's Grand Slam coming to Lloydminster this October. The high-profile curling event will be held at the Civic Centre from October 24th to 29th, hosting the top 15 men's and women's curling teams from around the world, marking an exciting time for the city. This is huge when you have the best teams in the world here in Lloydminster and, and we have such a passionate following for curling here and we have for so many years and we haven't had elite curling since we used to host the Wayside Curling Classic. Our last time we hosted that was nine, ten years ago. This is even more the elite teams. Kevin Martin is an ambassador for the Grand Slam of Curling and says this year's Pinties will be particularly exciting as it's right before the Olympic trials. It's a great time for those teams to play in a, a high caliber event like that. It'll be kind of neat to see all these international teams before the Olympics uh, ready to go. Tickets for Pinty's Grand Slam on sale now and already about 60% sold out. While the community has another opportunity to give back at the 6th Annual Wounded Warriors Weekend taking place July 27th to 31st here in the Border City, an event in support of those suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Josh Ryan with more. Since 2012, Wounded Warriors Weekend has given people suffering from PTSD a respite from the stress in their lives and the opportunity to meet others living with similar issues. It's just an opportunity for them to get together and talk to each other and find out that they're not alone. And I guess the main thing is they discover that it's okay to be not okay. After two Lloydminster residents spoke about the positive effects of last year's event, the local legion chose to step up as hosts. The committee have decided that they'd like to host it here in Lloydminster and we're going to be the host city for it, which is a real honour for our city. I hope citizens do take the time uh, that weekend, and that's the last weekend of July, that they're going to be in town to share and help out and come out and show, some, uh, show the respect that they deserve. Lakeland College will house the Warriors, who come from a variety of professions in addition to the military. We represent, of course, uh, veterans. We represent active duty personnel, firefighters, all, all of the above, trauma nurses. A boat raffle kicks off the prizes and activities for the event, which intends to utilize everything the border city has to offer and connect the Warriors with this community. If we do nothing but make the people aware that you can help that guy down the street who's quiet and by himself. This is an opportunity to help them have a chance to, to get away from the things they face on a daily basis and just have a relaxing weekend. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. This Wednesday marks the date of an event that's been helping communities in Western Canada for 14 years. Western Financial is hosting their annual Support the Cause walk at Bud Miller Park. The money raised will go towards funding community projects throughout Western Canada, along with bursaries for students who've been through adversity. Susan Cambridge with Western Financial says the feeling the office gets from this event is contagious. And I mean, speaking for myself as well as the rest of the staff, we enjoy doing it, the camaraderie of coming together. The walk is part of the Western Communities Foundation, which is currently raising funds through a Tooney drive across the city. Well, Eugene Sagan has been raising money in his son's name since he lost the fight with cancer almost four years ago. And now he's on his way across Canada to do even more. Nick Nielsen reports. A new facet to the Devon Sagan Memorial has been added this year as his father Eugene is driving across Canada right now to the eastern coast of Prince Edward Island to raise money for local families with sick children. The idea for the ride was inspired by a dream vacation his son had before he passed and now Eugene is taking him with him. I just got uh, Devon here with me and we're going to make her to the island and back. To raise money, the Sagan sold tickets with 15 minute time slots of when they think Eugene will return and the person with the correct time slot wins 50% of the proceeds raised. Eugene is trying to make it back in five days, but his wife Michelle has her doubts. His determination, absolutely. Um, I think I have a few questions about his bike just because I've ridden with him enough times. Eugene is making the ride alone, but did allow some of his friends to join him on the first leg of his journey to Saskatoon. One of those riders is Larry Filkowski, who says he couldn't miss this opportunity to join his friend on the start of his journey. He's always been 
I think kind of one of the, the, the hidden pillars of this community, um, especially since he lost his son to cancer. Uh, now he's all about kids that are in very serious trouble. And uh, that's kind of what I'm all about too. The Sagans presented a check to a family before the bikes took off, and now Eugene is well on his way across the country. If you'd like to keep up with where he is, he'll be posting on the Devon Sagan Memorial Facebook page along the way. Now it's anyone's guess when Eugene will return to Lloyd Minster, but when he does, he will be coming into a community with loving and open arms. What is known is that this will be a ride that Eugene will always remember in memory of a man this community will never forget. Nick Nielsen, New Cap News. Well, pets are important family members for many in the border city, and just like people, cats and dogs can get sick. In this week's edition of Retrospect, Brian Lentz shows us how pet owners have been keeping their pets healthy throughout the years. Man's best friend. We depend on our dogs and other pets for companionship and security, but they also depend on us to keep them safe, something local veterinarians say doesn't always happen. Vaccinations are probably one of the most important things that we can, that we can do for our pets. So we have a look at everything from head to tail, start off with their eyes, check and make sure their eyes are working properly nice and clear. Berg says yearly checkups and shots are important not just for the health of your pet, but yourself as well, as some illnesses can spread to humans. In dogs specifically, we do see a lot of parvovirus, which is a, a viral disease which attacks their intestines and uh, gastrointestinal system. Things like rabies. Not that we see a lot of rabies in this area, but it's more that it can be spread to people and it is a fatal disease. The Border City Vet says they always see a flare-up in the diseases this time of year, due mainly to more pets being outside with a greater risk of exposure to other animals. We see a very seasonal rise, especially in things like parvovirus. Spring and fall tend to be, you know, we can almost set our watches by it as to when it's going to when it's going to start hitting us. Um, summer is also a time when skunks and, and bats and things are, can be around and that's a time when you could be transmitting rabies as well. Decades later, vaccinations are still an important part of animal health, but now vets are giving shots for even more illnesses. Uh, we're doing a lot more kennel cough vaccinating and that's something that really was unheard of 25 years ago, but we have so many more dogs and cats in Lloyd. It's, it's growing, it's an, it's an exploding population of people having pets. Dr. Hanley adds, with advances in medicine, vaccines have become more effective. So some of the dogs were used to be yearly for rabies. Now, once they've had it twice over the course of a year, now we only have to do it every three years. And after 25 years as a veterinarian, Dr. Hanley says he's seen how well they work. I've never seen a case of parvovirus in a puppy, in a dog, that was fully vaccinated. We know that they work. We know that they prevent disease. So why wouldn't we? That's all for Retrospect. I'm Brian Lentz. The Courage Canada Trail Ride has been going on in the Minburn Innisfree area since 2004, and it's a tradition that has continued on because of the inspiration of one man. Nick Nielsen has more. <laughs> this is Curtis Anderson. In June of 2002, Anderson was riding bulls at the Pinoca Stampede, where he was bucked off and rammed twice in the head. After being in a drug-induced coma for three months, he's been gaining his abilities back and started the Courage Canada trail ride to raise awareness for severe brain injury. Basically starting from scratch, I was a year, week, a week short of a year in therapy. Since its start 13 years ago, the Courage Canada trail ride has raised over $167,000 and it's all gone to a few different places, including the Canadian Pro Sports Medicine Team, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and to brain injury survivors and their families. Longtime rider and friend of Anderson, Gwen Jacobson, says this ride supports a cause that is just too important to miss out on. Because I believe in it. I really do. I think it's helped, not only Curtis, but it's helped a lot of individuals that's had troubles through over the years. Anderson has always been a cowboy at heart, taking a lot of inspiration from people like Johnny Cash and Hank Williams. As a result, he's taken to writing cowboy poetry and music and has relearned how to play guitar. As well, he's been taking the reins as a motivational speaker and a safety advisor. Anderson says the most important thing is to keep raising awareness about brain trauma. It's you can't put a number on how much awareness that has been raised over the years, and that's the bottom line. Johnny Cash said it best, I have mountains to climb, and always will. The mountains I have climbed in my recovery 
have taught me that what you put in is what you get out. Nick Nielsen, New Cap News. The Border City has many talented athletes, and this week's New Cap Sports Athlete of the Week works hard in the classroom, on the field, and was selected to play football for Team Alberta. Brittany Matika with more. Garrett Hatchard is a grade 10 student at Lloydminster Comprehensive High School. He plays basketball, football, and track for the Barons. He is preparing for training camp with the U-17 Alberta football team this coming weekend in anticipation of the Pacific Challenge in Maui this August. Hatchford competed with over 400 athletes for his spot on the roster. I was focused mainly on my game. I, wasn't, I was trying not to get caught up in what everybody else is doing. I was trying to kind of do my thing. Hatchard is drawing on last summer's experience to help prepare his game. Well, at the summer games, there was just like, it was a new level. It was just, um, just the best players from all around Alberta. Uh, they were there, and it was just, um, it was a way better game, way faster. And it's just so, I can just use that and just um, kind of think about how much faster this next uh, level is going to be. He's so fast and so physical. Um, yeah, that's the one thing you see, it seems like, uh, when he's on the, on, the, on the field, everyone sort of seems to move in slow motion. It's, it's hard to explain. There's only a few people that can really keep up with him on the field. And, and he's bigger than those guys, so um, for a guy to be that big and that strong and that fast and that smart, it's a pretty special combination. The grade 10 student was also invited to attend a top prospects camp, where he was identified as one of the top 10 underclassmen in Alberta. They test you and just try and get you exposure to um, different universities all over Canada and uh, some in the States, I think. So yeah, um, that was fun. There was, uh, there was quite a few guys there and they were all really good. And, um, but yeah, they invited me to the uh, next, next level, which is um, in Ontario, which has all of the kids from all over Canada. The 15-year-old doesn't graduate until 2019, meaning that he has two more years as a Baron. He's the type of kid, uh, again, like you wish you could have you know, a few more of them. He's, he does the right thing in the classroom. He's never late. He's accountable to himself and his teammates and to his coaches. And he's a nice kid, a hardworking kid in the classroom too, and he just deserves it. Brittany Matika, New Cap Sports. Hockey is far from over in the Midwest region. AJHL teams are busy preparing for the upcoming season, meaning prospects camps are a go. Lance Phillips brings us this report on one of the more successful Alberta squads and their pursuit of young, talented players. The Bonneville Pontiacs are coming off another strong season in the AJHL's North Division. But outgoing players are leaving significant roster holes. Enter Top Prospects Camp, an opportunity for Pontiac's hopefuls to showcase their skills for coaches and scouts. Some of the plays I made uh, in the offensive zone I think could be better, shooting the puck a little quicker, but honestly I thought I battled hard and did pretty good defensively. I feel like I did pretty good, yeah. Uh, I was playing with Derek Brown, he's a great player, he moves the puck well, skates well, it was, a, it was a really fun weekend playing with him. We want them to walk away feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their performance and more importantly, uh, to know that if you're going to go to a camp, that the Bonneville Pontiacs camp uh, is, is, is the most enjoyable because of the things that we try and strike off for what's important to our organization. Over the years, it's become clear that what's important to the Pontiacs organization is also very important to players. It's the whole program. It's just the way they handle things around here. It's a lot better than I've seen in other programs, so it just really impresses me, and the coaching staff is obviously great, so that's a big step. Oh, well, honestly, the Pontiacs is a very well-respected organization, and uh, it'd be an honor to come play here. You can really see by the sweat and the effort and the performance that they did throughout the weekend that this camp meant something to the players, and, and that's really important. The camp also gave opportunity for some veteran Pontiacs players to hit the ice, bringing back thoughts of their first camp and trying to earn a highly coveted spot on the team. Just like these guys, my first year I was very nervous, trying to get all the nerves out and just trying to make a big impression on the coaches. But yeah, everything he says now is exactly the same when I was here. Uh, I know he sticks by it 100% and you know, that's, that's just what you expect from Rick. Reason for having our veterans involved is so that the players get a good sense of what our culture looks like. It's a mentorship opportunity for them to see how our players conduct themselves because our culture is about treating people the right way, but also it increases the pace of the camp and it allows us as an evaluator to get the right information on a player so that we can have meaningful feedback to him. 
It wasn't long ago when the Pontiac's numbers barely reached 80 players. A stark difference to what the club dealt with on the weekend. To go from that number to over 200 kids where we're turning kids away is, is tremendously a proud moment for our organization because we know the interest is there because we're creating the right impression each and every single year. Now comes the tough task of choosing 18 defensemen, six goalies and 36 forwards, including returning Pontiacs, to compete at the team's main camp in August. On the line is an opportunity to play for a 40-win AJHL team, but more importantly, a chance to be a part of a culture that not only churns out elite hockey players, but also elite individuals. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Bonneville.